Hello beautiful humans and welcome back to another episode of Daily J where we're talking all things sex, self-love and showing up as who you really are. I'm so grateful that you're here today and I'm so excited to talk about today's topic. The idea for today's video came to me um, when I was thinking back to a yoga class that I took probably a couple of years ago now. It was back in Sydney. I went to a Lululemon all day, full day event. They had a whole day of free yoga classes, um, free training, free everything. And a couple of girlfriends and I went along. It was in this big, beautiful old church that was absolutely stunning. And I will never forget the feeling of rolling out my mat in the center of the room and downward dogging and tree posing under the most beautiful, glorious image of Jesus and Mary Magdalene in stained glass on the ceiling above me or on the wall, the front wall above me. It was the most beautiful visual and just the most beautiful merging of East and West and traditional Hindu yoga, like yogic practices and more traditional conservative Christian theology. It was just stunning and I'll never ever forget it. But probably more important on that day was a story that I heard and his name escapes me, but I will put it in the description box below because I believe so wholeheartedly in giving credit where credit is due and crediting um, appropriately people for the work that they've done and the words that they've gifted to the world. It's something that I always like try to stand by in my own life. Whenever I post something anywhere on social media, I will always, always, always find who said it first. And um, yeah, and that comes back to me. I'm always credited for my work and um, you know, whenever I'm featured online anywhere or whenever someone quotes me, I'm always properly, um, it's always properly attributed to me, which I'm so, so grateful for always. So this story that I heard on this particular day was about a light bulb in a dark room. And this particular teacher was explaining to us and using this beautiful analogy to explain to us what was happening on the planet right now. It was right after Donald Trump's election into um, the White House. And there was a lot of turmoil going on globally. There was a lot of natural disasters that were happening. There was a lot of inquiries and inquisitions into child sex abuse in the church. There was a lot of attention being drawn to some really, some pretty heavy issues. And a lot of people had expressed, and this is not dissimilar to what's happening on the planet right now, every day. It doesn't take long to turn on the news and see examples of horror and tragedy and some really horrific things going on in the world. But a lot of people that were there that day were asking and looking to this teacher for guidance about and expressing their concern about a lot of the horror and a lot of the horrific things that were happening in the world at the moment. And I'll never forget the explanation that he gave. He said to us, he sat us all down. We we're all there in this big old beautiful studio. And he sat us all down and he said, what's happening on the planet right now is like a light bulb that has been placed in a dark and really kind of dirty room. And what happens is not that when the light begins to get brighter, when the wattage on the bulb is increased, what happens is not that new dirt comes to the surface or new dirt is created, but the corners of the room and the dirt that was already there begins to be illuminated. And what's happening on the planet right now is not that these issues that were never there are suddenly cropping up out of the blue, or things that were never a problem are suddenly a problem. It's just that as the wattage on the bulb is increasing, as the light is getting brighter, as more and more people are elevating their consciousness and stepping into their power and becoming one with all that is and one with each other, we're quite literally turning up the wattage on humanity and we're illuminating the darkness we're illuminating the places that have been shrouded previously in darkness. So what we're seeing on the planet right now isn't anything new. It's just the bringing to light of things that have always been there. It's the illumination of issues that were once swept under the rug. It's the complete transparency. It's the wisdom and it's the 
the first look and insight into things that have always been there, things that have always been a problem, things that have always been being created and things that have always been causing suffering and they're just not being hidden anymore. The vibration and the level of consciousness is such on the planet right now that these things are coming up to be healed. And we hear this term used so much in spiritual circles these days that it's all coming up to be healed. Whether it's in our own lives and we go through emotional trauma or turmoil, everyone, it's almost like something that, that people say just to calm us down or to help us get through it. It's like, it's okay, it's all just coming up to be healed. And we can see that happening on the planet right now as well. But what does it really mean? My take on it is that it's as though everything that we no longer need Everything that no longer serves us is being brought to our awareness, is being pulled right smack bang in front of our face so that we can no longer ignore it. One of the things that I'm most passionate about in the entire freaking world and in all that I do and everything I say is taking out or uncovering, bringing to light the things that have been previously swept under the rug, whether it's in our families, whether it's histories of abuse, addiction, alcoholism, whether it's the stories that were never told, whether it's the trauma that was never addressed, whether it's the, the harm that was never brought to justice, whether it's the cruelty or the criminal behavior that was never properly atoned for, whatever it is, you guys, whatever it is, all of the shit that has been swept under the rug for years and decades and centuries, whether it's in our families or our relationships or with our parents or our siblings, whether it's in our governments or our schools or our churches, whatever institution it happens to be a part of, there is nothing that I am more passionate about and nothing that is happening more quickly, more rapidly and more expansively on the planet right now than this uncovering, than this unveiling, than this tearing back of everything that's been covering up and of this letting go and shedding layers that no longer serve us. So whether it's happening on a micro level in your life, things are getting a little bit chaotic, like it's getting a little bit of, there's a little bit of turmoil that's going on right now, whether things are being brought to your attention or your awareness, it's time to let them go. It's time to do what we need to, to heal them. In AA, we talk about atoning where necessary and making amends. We talk about going back and looking at all the people that we've hurt and looking at all the scenarios where we weren't acting out of our highest true nature, our highest self for our true nature, and where it wouldn't cause more harm, apologizing saying sorry, forgiving ourselves first and then forgiving the other person, forgiving ourselves for whatever harm we've caused or wrongs we've done, and then forgiving the people who have caused harm to us or have wronged us in any way. And to me, that's what it means to not only look at what is being drawn to our attention, to not only look at what is being presented to us and brought up in front of our face, but letting it go. And we do that through forgiveness. We do that through a proper acknowledgement of past wrongs. We do that through apologies and atoning for our sins and the, the places where we were acting out of our smallness or the places where we forgot the reality and the magnificence and the magnitude of who we really are. And then we do that by releasing, releasing our attachments to the things of the past, releasing our attachments to old stories and identities, releasing our attachment to anything that no longer serves us, saying that we don't want to buy into those stories anymore. We don't want to be that person anymore. We don't want to hold on to that identity of who we were. We want to step into the identity of who we can be and who we really are. And we do that on, on an individual level in our personal lives. And we do that collectively as a global family and as a global society. We say, we no longer wanna be a kind of human race, a kind of humanity, a kind of population that gives way to our base desires, that perpetuates and champions things like slavery, whether it's, whether it's back in, the fifth, like the 1950s when slavery was last abolished or when, when slavery in some parts of the world was abolished or whether it's the slavery, the, the sex slavery that we see in 
Eastern and Western countries all over the world in growing numbers every single day, whether it's the slavery that we see perpetuated at the hands of our fashion industry, whether it's, and this is the thing you guys, and I'll go for a tiny little tangent here before I come back, I promise, but the majority of the suffering that is happening in the third world at the moment is being perpetuated at the hands of the first world. So Western countries like Australia, like America, like wherever else you want to use as an example, our consumption of things like fast food, fast fashion, of technology, of whatever else it is, our mass consumption of these things is perpetuating this cycle of abuse, of slave labor, of this unequal dis and creating this unequal distribution of wealth and resources. It's harrowing to accept, but it's also empowering to understand because if we created it, then we can change it. And if we created this scenario, then it also means that we can recreate something that is more in alignment with our higher selves and who we really are. And to me, this is what's happening on the planet right now. And to come back and to title in with this beautiful story of the light bulb is that it's not that things are getting worse. It's that they're being uncovered and it's not that issues are cropping up where there were never issues before or that, you know, problems exist where there was never any problems before. And we don't need to go back to a simpler time. We don't need to travel backwards to conserve or to to preserve what was what was what once was we're being invited into a new era we're being invited into a new evolution we're being invited into a new stage of consciousness in which the wattage on the bulb which is every single one of us stepping into who we really are and illuminating and shining our beautiful light for the world to see when the wattage on that bulb continues to increase everything starts to get brighter. What no longer serves us is now illuminated. The shadowy corners of the earth that were once shrouded in secrecy and shame and darkness, the shadowy parts of our hearts that were once covered, that were once trapped, that were once locked in shame and secrecy and darkness are brought to light, are coming up to be healed. And we no longer need to live trapped in fear anymore. We get to continue to be the light. We get to continue to shine and we get to heal and release and let go of what is no longer serving us. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the beautiful light and wisdom that you bring to this world. Keep shining, my little warrior. I love you so much.